So today's video is gonna be kind of a follow-up from the last video, which was about sanding the foil mast and catapults. It has poked a lot of your guys' interest, much more so than I thought actually. And therefore I thought it'd be a good idea to follow up on that one. And there were also a few things that remained unclear and unanswered. And that's why I'm going to Kiel right now. I'm gonna pick up a friend to film. We're gonna go on the water and run some tests today. Man, it has become insanely expensive to fuel up this car. But uh, yeah, I guess rightfully so. I hope this kind of van is gonna be uh, electric in the near future with a long range. I guess by the time that happens, electricity prices are gonna be up like crazy too. But you know what? That's how it should be. In the end, we're using energy and we should limit energy usage. So therefore it should have its price, right? Hello. Hello. <laughs> so now the main question is, what spot we go to. Seems like it's a little bit offshore in Strande. I think maybe it's the best place to fly the drone. Should be good. Wind is quite offshore, but uh, there's definitely something out there. I think I'm gonna rig my, probably I have to go with 8.2 or 7.4. It's always hard to tell. When the wind is offshore, you always think it's not so windy, but once you go out, it might be windy. All right, guys, so you have to understand that I windsurf professionally and therefore I do not only have one mast. I have a race mast, I have a spare mast in case it breaks at the race, I have training masts. It's the reason why I can actually run these tests because I do not only have one mast. This is the latest starboard foil, it's called Evolution, because it is an Evolution. If you know the previous starboard foil, you will notice the difference in the shape of the fuselage. This is the 650 square centimeter wing. It's uh, probably what, the one that I use the most, mostly for stronger winds. Uh, for lighter winds, I use a 725 as well, but this is really the main one I use. You can see that uh, yeah, it's, it's become a lot more hydrodynamic and therefore obviously faster. Before we had the fuselage going all the way until in front of the wing and now it's kind of a smooth transition. This fuselage is the 105. The, the 105 is uh, my go-to one at the moment. It's really reactive. You can adjust the angle up and down very nicely and uh, I, I believe the shorter one is also a bit quicker. And then I use the plus one shim here. There also is a new back wing which is a, a thin one. So this one is actually a bit thinner and therefore again it's uh, faster. The foil mast I have here right now is actually also a, a new one, a new development. It's made with C600 carbon, so it's like super, super stiff. Much easier to control, especially in strong wind. What I found interesting is that you can actually feel the difference in the jibe, so the jibe becomes easier. This spot is called Strande, and it's uh, on the outside of the Kiel Bay. I live on the other side of the bay, but uh, today we're here because on the other side it's really shallow and you have to walk far out to have enough depth for the foil. Still a bit sandy from the deafy wind. With a six millimeter wetsuit, it shouldn't be too cold out there. The reason I'm doing this test today, even though I don't have a testing partner, is uh, in the last video, I kind of drew a little bit of a wrong conclusion. I realized afterwards. Yeah, I just want to clear that up, but more about that in a second when I come back. My foot straps are still adjusted to uh, barefoot sailing and now I'm with boots. So when I wanted to take my foot out of the foot strap to jive, I couldn't get it out and the nose went down so I, I catapulted. But you know guys, <clears throat> this goes to show that there are so many factors involved and that's actually what I wanted to, to talk about because obviously after the last video I've had a lot of discussions with other people and uh, I read all your comments. For me, there's no definite in this world. I don't want to ever say like this is how it is because there's so many variables, uh, you know, that are sometimes unknown. The point is that the, the sanding uh, might have worked for me with this mask, but do we really know that maybe after I catapulted, I adjusted my sailing style after I sanded it, subconsciously I, I sailed differently. So we don't know these things and uh, to understand this or to show this, uh, like I said, I have a lot of masts and I've also sailed that without sanding, didn't have a problem. I don't want you to think that you put in the new mast and uh, you're gonna catapult. This is not what's happening, you know. Also, please understand that I've been using this mast unsanded in three Defi Wind races or actually four. Each of them was 20 kilometers and I had three catapults over in total 
total 80 kilometers. Okay, so we're talking about details, minor, minor things. This is what I want you to keep in mind. What the sanding did in the end to fix it, God knows what, that was my conclusion in that moment. Go buy your, go buy your foil and uh, don't worry about it. The point is that if you sand it, it's it's a performance thing, you know? That's what I did it for in the end. Also, you know, I was pushing on the limit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a brand new IQ foil mask, just because I don't have a new uh, C600 mask. But uh, yeah, I do some IQ foiling as well, which by the way is a sick class. It was good fun in Silver Plana at the World Championship. Maybe I can take you along next time with a camera. I'm gonna put on this mask, uh, unsand it, and afterwards we're gonna sand it down. Also after, also after I had problems at the Defi wind, obviously I, I spoke immediately with Tiesta from uh, Starward Foils, who's the founder and, and main developer. And he was just super on it. He wanted to know all the information, what's going on, because he wanted to obviously figure out what's wrong with that uh, particular mast. He's committed to making a good product. I couldn't change the foot strap size on the water because these are the light straps. I think this video is gonna be a bit more detailed and please do let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you like that? A little bit longer and more detailed? That's what we're doing today. Last one was a bit shorter. I always try to we keep the information short and sharp. So this one, I guess, is a bit longer. German we would say wie sie sehen sehen sie nicht meaning as you can see or as you could see you couldn't see anything brand new mask unsanded it was all fine obviously good that that is cleared up now what I want to do is I want to sand this mask and I want to sand it to make it a bit more efficient more performing this really is just for the last one percent of performance because yeah it's, it's just not that huge of a difference not even that huge of a difference that I could go out now test it with a speed watch and see that I'm not faster or something I might be a bit faster but maybe Maybe I hit a better gust. It's really just a tiny difference. Most of the professionals, they do sand it. Uh, they also sand the front wing, the back wing. And uh, I want to show you again how to do it because uh, last time I sand it only with my hand. But today I uh, went to the construction market and uh, got a little sponge. So now let me show you how you can sand it. You saw it in the last video, but today we're gonna do it a bit more accurate. This is super fine sandpaper, 2000 graining. Normally, if you do it with really fine paper, you're not gonna change the shape of the mast, okay? But just a disclaimer, you don't have to do this. Do it at your own risk. Important is that you sand it wet. So the mast is still wet. Normally, we'll take a, a bottle of water here and uh, pour some water over it. And then you go in the direction of the water flow. I'm gonna go ahead and sand the whole mast down now. If you do wanna use it in competition, make sure you check with the rules whether that's actually allowed. Um, usually, you know, in free ride foiling, it doesn't make so much sense because the performance you gain is really, uh, really little. But obviously in competition, then uh, that's a different story. Days are short, sun is almost uh, setting already, even though it's like only four o'clock, but uh, so this was the last run for today. Like I said, obviously it's not something where you feel a huge difference. And I don't think you saw a difference. That, uh, yeah, that was the whole point. One thing I do want to mention is uh, what I like about the, the Starwood Foils in general is they have a big range of conditions. Even the small wing, it gets you like lifted up really quick. And uh, the control is extremely good. So when you hit the gas, it's very predictable. Like you, got, it's very intuitive. You know what's gonna come at you and uh, you can control the gas. And especially on a day like this today, like I said, the wind is offshore. Very nice to control in the gas. I think this was a good test to show you guys what I actually meant. 
So that's obviously the part that's important for me as a professional windsurfer, but also in general, what's uh, good is the availability and the interchangeability. So you can just start uh, with one setup and then get a bigger wing or a smaller wing later on or a different fuselage. So you can just upgrade it uh, whenever you want. And uh, that is also the end of the video. We got some sun at least in the end. It was a nice day on the water. I hope I was able to clear things up a bit for you. Never stop learning. Thanks for tuning in and I see you guys in the next video.